HP is announcing their global reconfiguration of their portfolio services. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv, siliconangle.com's flagship telecast. We go out to the events and tech and talk to the smartest people we can find, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of uh, theCUBE, and I'm joined with. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're here with Michelle Weiss, who is the VP of Technology Services. Michelle, what do you got going here? You got a little, hey, you're bearing yeah. gifts, I see. Totally, totally, <laughs> and you're going to get pink, and you're going to get green, Okay. and what I wanted to <laughs> okay. share with you guys is, um, actually, it's all in a little scroll. Can we open? Absolutely, right. absolutely. Love, love and presents here. Th these are presents. And what we've got here We have are a fan club brewing, and groupies are next, day yeah, for the yeah. Cube. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, always ask for money wrapped in the things, Okay, right? so we have yeah. some... Uh, These are, this is really the guiding principles. You know, we sat down to re-architect this entire support portfolio, many billions of dollars of business, many tens of thousands of customers, and we said, kind of what's, what's in our head? What's really guiding us? What's our doctrine? What do we think? And we actually committed it to paper. So like all good revolutionaries, you know, we have a doctrine. All right, so let's read the Declaration of uh, su support, support Independence. Support <laughs> Independence. Let me, let me start uh, with the first one, and then we can, we can talk about uh, this one. So we believe you need a direct connection to experts anytime, anywhere. I mean, who the heck likes, you know, waiting on the phone and someone asks you for your serial number for the 11th time, what you really want is somebody to know who you are and what your problem is. Right, so it's almost like I, I want to be able to call their cell phone. Um, no. Exactly. Now, so, so you can do this today and this yeah. is a reality? Yeah, is absolutely. Yeah, I think you guys are going to hear even more about proactive care, but the idea in proactive care is you get directly connected to an expert, to somebody who knows, you know, not only kind of about the technology, because you expect us to know the technology. I mean, we're HP, we should know the technology, but actually knows your environment, what's happening with you. You know, because they've got all the instrumentation, the telemetry coming back to them, and they say, okay, we know this is the problem you're having, go right to them. So, so what's the user experience like? I, I call an 800 number, Yeah. and then what happens? You uh, get a very rapid access then directly over to your assigned expert then. And they you. say, hi Dave, you know. Oh, uh, you again. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, not you. And they've got their dashboard of my environment. Exactly. They know what's going exactly. On. But you know, even if you don't have the proactive care piece, mm -hmm. we talked to you guys at the you know the Voyager Gen Eight yep. uh, introduction. We talked about Insight Online, which is the cloud-based support portal, right? So that's access anytime, anywhere, wherever you are, and you get that whole dashboard, that personalized dashboard with the support information, the management information for you. And that was really, really important because that's you know, kind of for anybody can then get access if you're part of the HP family then. One of your things here on your um, declaration is, we believe you want push button simplicity from your technology and support. Yeah. Can you talk about that? I mean, I love the notion of push button. It means, it, it yep. Im implies like something gets done, there's elves out there doing stuff, and you, know, you push button, people answer. What does that mean to you guys relative to the, all the range of support yeah. you guys offer? N absolutely, and I mean, you guys have been in this industry, well, I'm going to say um, longer than me. I, every, the woman's right to be younger. Um, <laughs> I've been here a long time, <laughs> Michelle, so yeah, you're okay with but, that. And John's younger than I am, yeah, so okay, I'm the old uh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I think you know that to make things simple is actually really, really, really hard. And, and that's true anywhere. I mean, again, we'll harken back to the Voyager piece, right? It was all about simplicity. It was all about taking steps out. It was all about giving days back. It was all about automation, right? You saw that yeah. took... The energy thing was a big message, too. It was fantastic. Exactly, saving energy. You saw that took $300 million. It took 900 patents. It takes a lot of effort to get to that piece. So... Is push button simplicity absolutely there? Do you just push a button and get everything? No. Is that the design center we were after? Absolutely. And in fact, um, Inside Online is a great example, right? Personalized dashboard right there for you at your fingertips. It's, it's just there for you on the, you know, via the cloud when you want it. And we'll show you later um, access on a mobile phone. You know, it's that kind of thing. Make it easy for me to know what the heck is going on. One of the things that Scott talked about, Michelle, if you can kind of give it the, the marketing flair for him, is that, that I took notes on that I liked was, the automation's great, but there's also a personnel component. Yes. Um, and all the single point of contact, innovate, agility, serve the CIO as a service broker. Um, all that stuff's great. But the key thing I, I liked when I asked him, what was the single most thing that you think HP does well? He said, operations, operating things process and you know being XHP I know HP is very process centric 
He said the challenge is to get in, in there and help customers evolve to operations. How does that all fit into the credo that you were putting forth? Yeah, no, I think those are all really good points around you know where people are and then leveraging our strengths. But you know, at the end of the day, it is about people. And a lot of what we talk about is connecting with experts. A lot of what you've seen, you know, the, the videos we're playing are our real experts. They're not actors. They're real people. This is what they do. We'll hear from, from them. They're going to yeah. dialing in. You tried to hire actors, but they couldn't do they it. They couldn't do it. They were like, what is this stuff? But you see, they're, they're, you we're know. We're not actors, David. <laughs> <laughs> Though we've had a little work done, right? But they're, they're from all over the world. And really what they do is they're not just connecting with your technology, right? They know your business. So I think that's really the point where we get people, which is don't just give me a generic set of practices. What about me? What about what I need to do? What about what my goals are? And I think that's part of that operational piece. I think the other thing we're really good at is collaborating. I think that by far is really a hallmark of an HP culture is that we collaborate. So for me, collaboration in the support world is about with the, cu with the customer. What are you trying to do? What's going on? Where are you going? Here's what I recommend. But it's also collaboration with the rest of that ecosystem, right? Because you get channel partners who want to make channel, money. Absolutely. It's all about gross margin. And services is big margin. I mean, it's all gross profit. Absolutely. And we, we, we'll talk about service one. The other part is um, the ISV community, right? Talk to me about VMware, you know? That's, that's what my environment is. We have, you know, we do the most VMware training in the world. We have all these VMware certified experts. Talk to me about Microsoft. Talk to me about Red Hat. It's all of that part of it. So that, all those pieces are in there, for sure. How about this, we believe routine problems should fix themselves. Uh, a little bit. What kind yeah. of problems? What are you doing there? That's that yeah. caught my eye. Yeah, I mean, I, I laugh to these guys. I always call that one the while you were sleeping. You know, I just have this view of some guy, he's sleeping, and <laughs> while he was sleeping, you know, his machine sent an alert out to us. You know, we saw it, and then when you get up, you know, while you were sleeping, the part's on its way. While oh, you were sleeping. Uh, you get the alert, not me, I love Dave that. And I, Dave, Dave, Dave and I use it. that all the time when we yeah. say the best business models are the ones that generate income when you're sleeping, like what Google does with their yeah. own business model. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. The, the business is running exactly. on machines, essentially, yeah. they can't be down. I actually have um, uh, some poll results, um, actually on that routine uh, problem one, we're actually um, real time doing a poll. Uh, we've got one on Facebook, um, so like us on Facebook. If, is there if an address, like is there a URL, facebook.com slash yeah, services? Yeah, 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 TS it? services, and you can also do hashtag. Um, so it's hp.com slash go slash TS connect. TS connect one, gets right? us to our, our main oh, uh, our, expert website, expert yep. Website. What's and, the hashtag on Twitter right now? Hashtag HP tech. T E C H services, S V C S, all one word. So hashtag HP Tech Services. And um, someone just gave me the poll results off of Facebook. Off of Facebook, I want to stop solving the problems from scratch every time was um, the number one answer, which is you know yeah. pretty cool. We're also doing a um, the poll out there um, with the Connect community, which is our users group. Uh, HP Connect is you know, not run by HP, but it's a, a user group community. And, oh, well, here, they're going to patch management, which is part of our manifesto here. I want to stop the nightmare that is patch management number one mm. with the user group. Number one. So it's, um, it's, it's actually not even encountering these problems anymore. I mean, you're taking that away. And the other thing you hear a lot from customers is, when I have a problem, I want it solved fast. Absolutely. So how, I mean, we, that, that was a big theme of Voyager. Um, have you seen it start to hit reality and how does that change the support aspects? Yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, people want value, right? And, and I think there's a whole economic model around support which really pushed us to revolutionize this piece, right? Because support in the old days, right, was great. Very high touch, but really, really high price, right? right. You can think about, you know, name the proprietary stack of your choice. I mean, a mainframe environment, whatever, Solaris, whatever. Very good, but really high price. Then the point people said, you know, I really, I can't afford that. And what happened to them? Where do they end up? Required. Back of the queue. Well, <laughs> or back of the queue, you know, <laughs> waiting in the offshore call center to give your serial number for yeah. the gabillionth time, you right. know. So people said, well, I, I need value in there. I need something that will give me that speed, that rapid response, because time is money in uh, what I'm doing. So that was really part of what we were getting at. But in order to get that speedy response, there's a lot of, back to the simplicity, right? A lot of R&D effort around doing that, right? Because you really need to know what the problem is 
um, you know, and you even saw a member of Voyager. We talked about the um, smart socket guide right. on the uh, on the processor. Yep, yep. You know, just looking to say pins got bent. Why? You know, you have a, a obviously strong product marketing background, and I was going to ask you like what's different between product and, uh. and marketing, uh, product and service marketing. And I, I still want you to answer that question, mm -hmm. but it also, just an observation, it seems like they're coming together in a, yeah. in a big way. So yeah. talk about that yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I really think that with, particularly with Gen 8, and I keep coming back to that, I think because in a way that was a catalyst mm -hmm. for us, it really, really springboarded things to say, let's really, let's have the intelligence embedded, let's have it you know, automatically ignite. And what you see there, I call it kind of this convergence, which is a, you know, a big buzzword, but this convergence of the server and the services, you know, coming together uh, there to bring that customer experience. Because at the end of the day, that's why people buy from us. It's what experience do they have? They can't tell if something's a nanosecond faster or whatever, but they know the experience. Am I always up and available? Can I get the results I need quickly? Do my applications run fast? Am I protected? You know, that piece of it. And that's really what we've got here is that convergence of these coming together. And in fact, organizationally, you see we all report to Dave Donatelli. Right. So that, I think, helps spur things on as well. Yeah, I think that was, a, we noted that move yeah. last year, yeah. last June around HP Discover, and I thought that was a good one. But I'm, but Michelle, I'm reminded of that movie RoboCop. You remember that movie and the and the crazy corporate you are guy old. goes. He goes, I am old. It's like I had to be back to the '80s, and he's saying, 20 years of maintenance. You know, it's, yeah. it's going to line our pockets." And so, so in the near term, don't you make less money when you do all these great things for customers? I totally disagree with that statement. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the customer is who. That's who you know writes my paycheck. That's who pays us. That's why they have to see value in what's being provided, or they will opt out they will opt out. So you really have to constantly push the envelope with them. We have to revolutionize where we're going. We looked and we said, you know, support done that same old way, it's just not relevant. You know, if you think about support per one box, it's virtualized, where the heck is it? I don't know. How, do you, how does that make sense? How does my contract make sense? Make sense of it for me. Give me value, and I'll stay with you. So Dave, just interrupt. Just interrupt. We got a little <laughs> yeah. Twitter action here. Uh, so we have Todd Cadley out there, who's a senior executive in uh, in New York City in, uh, for a communications firm. He says, Furrier, way to start a trend. Services angle. And then another. Uh, <laughs> See a <you>, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, these aren't plans. They actually. Uh, and then uh, Matthew Stott says, Hey, what's the cube doing in my backyard? How do you know? Come on down. Come on I down. I say we're starting beach angle next. That's our next <laughs> vertical. Angle, yeah. um, we're close here. So okay. I say Twitter is, a, you know, just, I love Twitter because it's instant response. But these are the kind of tools that we're talking with, with, with uh, your GM about that, about these new environments. Absolutely. Um, you guys have to adapt to that. How do you guys look at this in, from rolling out? Because you said customer centric collaboration requires, you know, touch points, which you guys have had a great reputation in. But it's that those touch points are changing. Absolutely. There's a lot of back channel conversation on Twitter. I mean, Dave's Wikibon has a community of practice. They're all talking themselves about changing pricing. What do you get from the vendors? Absolutely. So you have to be transparent, mm -hmm. but yet real time. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And you, no longer can you do that kind of, we did a price increase, so we didn't tell anybody, and we just hope you don't notice in yeah. your contract. You know, it just doesn't work that way uh -huh. um, anymore. And I think that we, we recognize what's, and you asked me the difference between product and service. Let me yeah. come back to that. Please. Because one of the really cool things I found in services, and this is going to sound a little bit like motherhood and apple pie, but it's about people. It, it's a people business. And having spent most of my adult life working on products, and I dearly love products, services is so cool because it's people. And people mean community. And I think for us, as you see our experts going forward, we realized that right off the bat we said, wait a minute. That's our differentiation. It's in the people. It's in their expertise. It's in bringing a human touch to technology. Even though we have great technology, we'll continue to have great technology, but people relate to another person. So how we harness that community together is super important. We have over 30,000 people like us on Facebook. We've only put a Facebook page up at Christmas time. We were like lightning. I said, because people relate to other people. They relate to who they either talk with, chat with, comes shows up on their site and whatever that's where it's at I think when you talk, and I talk to a lot of customers and you and when you probe with customers what the real value is um, you know there's product there's brand there's all kinds of things that you can break down but really what it comes down to is that is Absolutely. it's when I have a problem they're there for me it's yeah. the people it's the relationships it's the it's the service that I get from this organization which is why I keep buying and yeah. I would say it's if you had to allocate a hundred dollars of value I'd say 50 is that absolutely yeah. absolutely and that's you know we are the face of HP 
mm-hmm. to everyone. And that, that was one of the neatest things for me coming over. I have a big storage and server background. Came over and I realized not that I didn't have to push my team on customer intimacy. Because I'm so used to saying, you know, you need to get out and talk with customers. They, that's, that's in their DNA. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're like, we are the front line. We know that. And that's who they know from HP. So indeed, as we roll out new technologies, as we come up with new strategies, making sure that all the people in technology services understand that and can articulate that is super important. So my job, my job is a communications job, really is. And it's equally as important internally as it is externally, because those are the guys who interface, right? Those are the guys who who talk each and every day. And it may not be always face-to-face, it's going to be hopefully using automated tools, all of that. The crowdsourcing things, like some things we're doing. But Absolutely. The, you talk about communities, so that's something that was really close to our heart, this notion of communities, because in this always-on right. world that you guys are you know, putting your services around, you know, people are talking to each other as, just as much as they're talking to to you know their own family and friends. Yes. So your customers are talking to other customers, not necessarily through you, so you have this new dynamic of social exactly. interactions exactly. where you have experts. So how do you look at your plans? How are you marketing your experts? Because that's a unique yeah, advantage. It really is. So uh, I'll tell you one of the things we're doing is something we call an expert chat. So what we do is we say at this time uh, and this date, you can come in live and talk with one of our experts. Now, we also have a bunch of people that are that are there with them that will take you know real-time questions and we'll post all of that. We're actually doing one in a week's time, Friday, I think, next week, on protection in the cloud. How do, how do I ensure and do IT assurance, basically, all IT processes, all of that. How do I do that in a cloud environment? And so you can come on in and do that. Of course, that's all available, replay, et cetera. But we're doing that real time. To us, we're mostly going out to our install base, right? We're saying, hey, you guys want to know in here, but anybody's welcome. Anybody's welcome. Talk with each other. Talk with us. Engage with us. And then on that site that you just said, www.hp.com slash go slash tsconnect, you can actually click on any of our experts. You can see what they've written. You can see, you know, their patents. And you can send them a note. So Steve Jobs, um, who recently passed away, obviously lives in town of Palo Alto, is really the revolutionary in a lot of people's minds, and he's being written up that way. You guys are have a revolutionary theme hey, here. We're you know? revolutionary. So this is all about the re- and your and your yeah. press release went out. It's like you know, it's changed the world. Um, that's great messaging. So talk about that revolution. What specifically is the revolutionary aspect of this announcement? The yeah. science and get in some of the specifics. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you you know, if you want to get down to specific, let's talk patch management. You know, we were just. I mean, yeah. that's about as specific as you can get, right? If you talk to a lot of our experts, I'm going to say that the main culprit of, and let's just say downtime, issues. Main culprit of issues is what? It's firmware revision levels, software updates, it's it's that kind of thing. Not the sexiest thing on earth. It's not hardware breaking, right? It, it, well, it's it's usually that, it's that yeah, kind of, it's, recover right. recover from that. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. there, stuff happens, yeah. um, but it's usually that kind of mm-hmm. activity, right? What people want to know is, don't tell me every update that's there. Okay, one good thing, if you can tell me the status of, of my environment and, and where I am. Tell me what's critical. Tell me what I really need to do. Tell it for me, for specifically for my environment. Which are the ones that are critical? And that's part of what we do with this proactive care. We go out and we say, you know, let's sit down twice a year. We'll go through. We'll do the whole. We'll look at all everything you've got. And we'll make a recommendation to you. These, are, these you really, really ought to do. Don't worry about these. So you're saying patch management has traditionally been one size fits all. And, well, everybody and, goes, you're supposed to and, do all these. You and know, it like, shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, is this really critical for me? Mm. It takes a lot. Again, time, money, that's value. And you saw, we were just laughing about the poll, but uh, the user one. groups, they say number one. Man, it's it's a nightmare for me. Okay, we got a question from um, Matthew out there. Um, I said lop in the question. So his question <laughs> is, um, <laughs> we will put this in for everybody. How does HP help manage community clouds? Question mark. Why are community clouds, a.k.a. vertical clouds, useful slash necessary? Look, I think the, I mean, you guys should probably answer this better than me because I've just been looking at your, some of the fantastic uh, algorithms and stuff you have running in, on, the, on the vertical slant on things, mm. et cetera, on stuff. But um, I think that putting the blinders on to stuff that's happening out there is completely the wrong way. And I think that we've, we've learned that 
over the years many, many times, right? I think embracing pieces here. But what do, what do you guys think on this one? Because this is definitely well, in your I'll, milieu. Maybe I'll help tease yeah. the question out. Matthew yeah. can just give me a tweet and explain, explain what does he specifically mean. But here's what I think he means. I think um, Community Clouds is about creating um, essentially multi-tenant-like environments for um, services. Services being products and services and or um, collaboration services. So, you know, you go back a few years, even go back seven years, the whole enterprise 2.0 trend was a big yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. that was like seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting old. What do we have now? Yeah. Jive and Yammer? Yeah. That's, it? that's yeah. it? I mean, come on, that's that's weak so in my opinion. But So I think my opinion is it's the ability to basically instantly turn on resources and services around predefined or pre-existing user groups. Um, I don't know. I think that's more of a uh, would be a product that you guys would have to offer. Yeah, well, and I would. think I think Kevin Smiley would be a great person to ask yeah. the question of. He's got an industry focus. See, I, I inferred the question differently. So I take uh, like a healthcare company like Cerner, right. who's standing up their own public cloud and providing yeah. services to Big the healthcare customer. industry. And I think you're seeing that in financial services and healthcare and other right. other industries. And I, I think we should we should so so he, that so he follows up and says he yeah. follows up and says our enterprise IT departments really on Twitter question mark using Facebook to connect with their service providers, question mark, new developments, kind of what's happening in the environment. Um, I'd just say they're definitely on Twitter. Yes, they are. Now, <laughs> IT CIOs may not be tweeting because they're too busy. They're too old. But some, some guy out there, Ask all IT, of IT person, you know, has SAP. a port problem, they're going to be on Twitter. Damn, this port's not working. Absolutely. Patch is not. So they're essentially, you know, you're saying that they're unhappy. So you can actually get that information. Absolutely. So. And, and actually, I just looked, I'm actually on the board of the IT Services Marketing Association, and one of the things we look at every year is how people are getting information. Huge break this year. Huge break this year about where people are really going. And, of course, huge bifurcation in age. Right. So uh, you can just look at the data. I'll send you guys the data because it's really interesting to look at. And it's clearly now they're going to social media to websites to all of that used to be peer recommendation number one was always number one it's been number one since you know god was a baby boy no longer mm. there really are people are looking here but you can actually cut it by age and you're seeing it's all over so this whole idea of i want to go to cerner because cerner is an expert in healthcare. i want to get the source services from them because they know what they're saying and i also want to all follow and, and have an affinity to that together is, is the next thing we're going to see. Okay, we're here with Michelle Weiss, VP of Marketing for the Technology Service for HP, revolutionary. We have uh, the document, we have the <laughs> scroll, uh, we heard some great questions from, from Twitter, so uh, we're we're actually behind schedule now, all that great conversation. <laughs> Thanks to Matthew for the, for the tweets. Too. We're going to get on to his questions about social. I personally believe this is changing the game. I think HB's announcement is, is points to that, and we're going to go deeper in that with some of their experts and some of our commentary. So we'll be right back, and uh, we're going to our next segment. We'll be right back.